Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is on the NIN enrollment. Uh, news reports yesterday, of course, uh, from the minister says the, you know, there's a possibility of fines or jail term for persons who fail to register for their national identity number. And of course, reactions have continued to follow that story across the country. Uh, with Nigerians, of course, uh, pretty much, you know, very, very much, or pretty much against uh, uh, that idea. We're speaking this morning with uh, Mr. Katch on Nonuju, a political analyst. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, good morning. All right. All right so let's uh, get you in, first of all, with your reaction to, you know, this. When you see a, a story like this in the news, that Nigerians who fail to enroll for their national identity numbers might, you know, be fined or might, of course, be sent to jail. Uh, what's your, your reaction to that? Well, I, I believe the minister was speaking absent knowledge. We live in a society governed by law. He can't just make a pronouncement that is not backed by a law. If what he says is to be believed, then he will start uh, building consensus at the National Assembly to try to bring up a legislation that will make the linkage of our telephone numbers to the National Identity of the Card an illegal act. Until that is done, and a legislation produced to back that up, he is just daydreaming. Nothing he says will come to that. Okay, Mr. Ononoju, talking about legislation for you know Pantamis statements to jail people who tried to conduct business without registering for their name. Let's quote what he says here. Uh, Pantamis says, "Quote." For you to open a bank account without a national identity number is an offense. For you to pay tax is an offense. For you to collect pension is an offense. For you to enjoy any government service without having your national identity number is an offense. And he quoted section 27 of the NIMT Act of the year 2007. And I confirm that that's true according to, to, to Nin. But the issue here is the prescription of the jail term, even though this is, is prescribed here in you know, the NIMSI Act. So would you just say this is a tactic to drive fear into the hearts of Nigerians and force them to register? Also, we spoke to an analyst earlier who said the motivation to, reg to register should not be punitive, but you know, the government should make this easier. What, what do you have to say about that? Well, as you rightly spoke now, it's all based on fear. The initial demand was simply to drive fear into the population so that they can have people conform to that. It's a new instruction, and the people have since been going to get registered. The only way you can make it mandatory is to ask agencies not to provide services unless we bring the national identity number. But to turn it into a criminal offense, you will need legislation for that. So nobody will take it seriously when he starts talking like that. Yeah, but and I know there's a court order which acts that sort of expensive measures not be taken. So I think uh, the man doesn't know what he's saying when he's thinking about such harsh penalties. Okay, but you, you, you're, you're talking now, you just mentioned... And it will never be. You just mentioned uh, a provision of, uh, you know, uh, government services to people, you know, and they might, you know, not be able to gain access to those services if they don't have um, the complete registration with the national identity number. Uh, do you think the Nigerian government has, you know, or can use that really as enough, enough uh, leverage to in, uh, get people to register uh, and get uh, their NINs? That's the only thing he can do to drive fear into the minds of those 
who don't understand the way the world, the society works. But apart from that, I think he's just trying to make himself more important than the law gives to him. He will be there. The registration will come and go, and nothing will happen. It will simply become a new protocol in our national registration. I, that's, I think that's about all I say about it. It's not uh, anything too serious. Hmm. Okay, well. Mr. Ononoju, how do you think Pantami's statement might impact crime and fraud? Because as it stands, even before Pantami's statement, I've heard of people who went to register for their NIN. But NIMSI officials there asked for money, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 Naira per head, if you must register for your NIN. And now that it seems the government has made this compulsory in such a way that it's attracting punishment of, you know, fines and 14-year jail term, how do you think this would, you know, further embolden people who want to charge as high as, you know, any amount just to get you registered? Well, as in everything Nigerian, corruption will always creep in. So the corruption is available in a lot of the processes connected to everything government. So I'm not surprised that people are charged for them to be giving quicker treatment. It's a societal problem. It is not caused by the registration. The society is that corrupt and will, of course, register that kind of corruption in anything it does. Society is corrupt already. It's not the registration that forces it. All right. Um, Mr. Nodjo, I, I want you to also quickly share, you know, some of, you know, I'm bringing back the social amenities uh, perspective. Um, can you give an example, you know, examples of the type of social amenities Nigerians may uh, be restricted from uh, having access to if they don't have uh, their national identity numbers? You know, that should be able to encourage more Nigerians to get registered. And I'm talking about Nothing the ones like that you expect the government, that. the ones you expect the government to be providing uh, for citizens, you know, that if they don't get registered, then maybe they might not be able to gain access to these amenities. All these things are simply ways to force registration. We pray the government does not throw away the data and in some months time, cancel it and start something new. We've done a lot of things like this before. The government are not used to keeping data and keeping records. I'm aware that the US sanctions is part of the reason for this rush to document everybody. I pray that the documentations are kept and the stores are preserved. Uh, there's nothing wrong with getting registered because the society has leaders that do not want honest registrations and that are kept by the citizens because they don't want truth to be exposed about our true population numbers and the diversity of that population. That's why they do not keep records. Nigerians will be happy to keep records. And I hope that those records are used for proper analysis when the sum making is made. Okay. All right. Well, we know that at the moment, uh, Panimsi has mentioned, even Jam has mentioned that if you don't have your name, you can't register for Jam, you can, you can take post QME. So we're having uh, the government attempt to cut access to education because of that, so to speak, or using that as a means to get people to register. We also know that the FRSC has said that uh, without your NIN, you cannot get your driver's license. So I think they're already putting that into place uh, and into yeah, force, that, really. Uh, it's, it's really whether that's enc encouraging enough um, you know, to get Nigerians. The other amenities that the government yeah. should provide. Uh, Mr. Nonadji, thank you so much uh, for your time this morning. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you very much for having me. Have a great day.